So today we are gonna of Jürgen Schieber to look at the flume tank that he has. Here we go. This is the flume. We have some water, muddy water, that is flowing. And here we go with Jürgen. Hello Jürgen. So what do you want to know? I want to know why this is unique, and well, there's nothing else like this. Why is it unique? Uh, because we are kind to flocules. I mean, flocules are fragile assemblages of clay minerals and other small grains. And in a normal, in, under some normal turbulent conditions in a river or in a tidal channel or something like this, they're perfectly happy to stay together and be transported uh, around as bed load. But in a classical flume with recirculating pumps, the flocules are basically destroyed every few meters because they go through a high shear stress zone in the, in the centrifugal pumps. And therefore, the flow contains a lot of clay, but the clay has no time to behave naturally by turning into flocculated materials. It's going to be single clay flakes, which hydraulically are much lighter than flock, I mean, um, have much smaller settling velocities than flocules, and therefore would just travel in suspension. And so in a thing like, in a flume like this, at running at these velocities, which is about 20, 25 centimeters per second, they would not settle out. They would have no chance to do so, okay? But when we, instead of recirculating the water with pumps that produce a lot of shear stress, use a paddle belt to push the water with the paddles through the flume, then the turbulent conditions that the, the shear stress conditions that those flocules experience are pretty much the same as they would maybe in a, in, a, in a river channel or a tidal channel. That means they are able to stay together and travel over the bottom of the flume and come around and go around. And instead of being in suspension, they form flocules that transfer into bed load and then once they're in bed load, they form ripples and they can accrete into individual mud beds under conditions of lateral transport vessels and vertical settling. When did you first thought about building up this flume tank? Uh, in 1993. Now, when did you build it up effectively? We actually we had a very, very tiny flume in 1993 that we used as a proof of concept. And, but we finally got around to write a proposal to build this flume in the back there, which was Mark I, basically. Uh, we, the proposal was written in 2001. It got turned down because it was patently impossible to do it anyway. And then we resubmitted it about one and a half or so years later and got it funded in 2003. And then we built that big flume back there, which is the same dimension as this one, just slightly different setup. And uh, we started running experiments in 2005. Uh, and uh, the critical results for you know, proving the point that laminated mud beds can be can form under sustained flows from clay materials. Uh, Critical experiments probably happened in 2006, uh, but even the first experiment already showed that flocculate clays easily, in, even in fresh water. Do you want to talk about the boundary conditions of this mud flume? Boundary conditions, what do you mean with that? In the yeah, the boundary conditions in an experiment. Well, you know, the, we basically can run up to velocities that would uh, hydrodynamically be equivalent to a shear stress that would induce upper flow regime. So we, we, we can basically go to velocities that would, if we had sand in this flume, would produce uh, upper flow regime bed forms. 
and everything below that. Which is the relationship between the sediment structures that you get and turbidites? I don't know. <laughs> we haven't done the experiments yet. Okay, and uh, which are going to be your future experiments? Uh, we will do, for example, uh, simulations of uh, potential transport, mud transport process on continental shelves, and also, of course, uh, studying taxos that form or might form in high concentration flows, you know, things like that would be typically considered liquid muds and see what kind of sediment structures you might be getting there. And also, you know, extending from there, explore, uh, try to simulate the depositional regime in a turbidite-like suspension that is gradually slowing down by having the sediment go around in circles and gradually building up. So right now, what's going on in the, in the mud view? Right now, we just do special testing for an, uh, one of our elite clays. We want to find out at what velocity it will start continuously deposit clay and, uh, and basically accrete into a bed. And right now, we're at about 20 centimeters per second, which is below that threshold. So we're actually forming ripples that are building up at the bottom. So are there ripples right now? I should hope so. Let's see. Yeah, actually, we don't have a whole lot of sediment inside at the moment, so the ripples are mostly concentrated in two main streaks here and here. And in the middle section is actually a little bit, and you see both of those streaks. But because a, a, there's not a lot of sediment in there, it, it's, you don't get complete bed coverage yet. If we would double or triple the amount of sediment in there, right now it's only about something like a little bit over a gram of sediment per liter, which is not a whole lot, okay? Once we're running with something like, once we have added, let's say, uh, so that's about, we have about 1,000 grams of sediment in here at the moment, which is considering the volume of water in here, not much. Uh, once we have maybe, let's say, added 10 kilograms of sediment, then we would have a solid bed forming this ripples moving over and so forth. It's, uh, but for simple threshold experiments, we don't have to add all that sediment into it because it will behave similarly when we have less sediments than we have a lot, basically. And uh, if we use less sediment, we have to do less cleaning. And cleaning a flume after the experiment can take one to two weeks because mud is sticky. So it's not easy to get out. Jürgen, do you easily find students that want to help you out with these experiments? Um, during the week, it's easy. During the weekends, it's a little bit more difficult. Do you pretend them to work during the weekends? Uh, I tend to insist on it. Do you do it? Yes. <laughs> okay. So have a nice weekend, Jürgen. Bye.